When you have finally gotten your favorite character, when you finally built out their perfect team, maybe even two teams, there are a lot of people's opinions on what you should do next. Wish on the weapon banner. Do not wish on the weapon banner. Get some high value constellations. Never get constellations. The topic of vertical investment is a ridiculously controversial one all across the community. So let's talk about whether you should wish for more and more and more and more and more and more characters or if you should hyper invest into your favorites and what really is the right decision for you. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. It's really interesting to see the extremely polarizing opinion that people have of vertically investing into your characters. Just so we're all on the same page, vertical investment is getting things like the five-star weapon, the constellations for your character, or even spending endless amounts of resin in the same domain trying to get the maxed out artifacts for your favorite character. So when is it right to spread your resources wide and what's called horizontal investment across many different characters? And when is it right to go for constellations on your specific character? I'm going to start off by talking about what I see as the pros for each side and then the cons for each side and finally give you my recommendation on what I would do if I was in your shoes. The number one pro for horizontal investment or for having lots of characters is, well, you have lots of characters and lots of characters give you many more ways to experience one specific part of the game and that is team building team building can be incredibly, incredibly fun. It is one of my favorite parts of the game. I love the skill expression that you can have from team building, from crafting the perfect team, not only to max out a specific character, but also to go up against the specific content that you're trying to go up against. For example, I love Raiden. Raiden is my favorite character in the game, and I use her in every single abyss. But sometimes abysses, the abysses are different. Sometimes I'll need Pyro on one side, so I won't be able to use Raiden with Bennett this abyss. So that throws out national team with Bennett, Zhang Ling, and Sing Cho. And that throws out her hyper carry team. And so then I'm looking through my roster and saying, hmm, what else can I build? Well, I can build an aggravate team with Baiju or Kirara, or maybe a double hydro team with Sing Cho Yilan. Maybe I join the dark side and turn her into a hyper bloom bot. This process for me of thinking about which character I should characters I should use, which teams I should build, how I should construct my team is really really fun for me and very very interesting. I also love the aspect of whatever challenge I face, whether it's a different domain, whether it's an event, whether it's a weird elemental check abyss, I have the characters that I can construct a team built specifically for that. So if grouping is really really important, Maybe instead of just using Kazuha, I would use Kazuha and Venti or Kazuha and Sucrose. If, survivor if survivability is really important, I might bring both Baiju and Kuki to have those extra healings and Sing Cho. And now I have extra healings, extra interruption resistance, extra damage reduction, and I'm going to have a much, much comfier clear than if I were to run maybe Kuki with, with double hydro. Nahida. So depending on whether I need more damage or I want more comfort, I need more AoE, I need more single target, I have many different tools that I need. No matter what element, elemental check that comes up, I have characters built of every single element. Along the same lines as team building is just the absolute blast that it can be to try different variations of playstyles. Each and every character plays really differently. Playing Wanderer feels really a lot different than playing Raiden, even though you can play them both as hyper carries. Playing Yelan versus Sing Cho feels really different, even though they're off field, uh, deep off field burst reliant characters playing a Nilu team with Kokomi versus a Nilu team with Barbara it feels different even an Ayaka team with Kokomi or Barbara an Ayaka freeze team versus a Kokomi freeze team a Sino hyper bloom versus an Al Hytham hyper bloom team they're both similar teams are a Kaching a Kaching aggravate team versus a Yaimiko aggravate team or a, a Tainari spread team versus Al Hytham a Nilu bloom team is completely different than anything I had ever tried once I tried a Nilu bloom team I was amazed at how much fun it was and how different it is to play than so many other things. Yoimiya versus Hu Tao, very similar, but also very different. The amount, when you when you have a horizontally invested account, you can try so many different play styles. You can feel the backloaded damage of, of Eula's massive, massive nuke. The jumpy, dumpy play style of Klee, the satisfying Diluke burst. Like there's just so many, so many different ways uh, to play the game when you have different characters and it just keeps the game fresh and fun and interesting. It really is 
a joy to experience the combat system in so many different ways. There is a really big downside though, and the first con that I can see for horizontal investment is that it takes a really long time and a pretty good amount of effort to actually build up all these characters. The amount of resin it takes, the amount of days it takes of to farm, the amount of enemies in the overworld I have to go and fight, the amount of mushrooms I've had to fight for Wanderer and, and Kale and different things. It is it is an actual it is an actual chore. Like it it feels like a grind. And it doesn't feel nearly as bad when you're just building a reasonable amount of characters, I would say. But when you start like really committing to this horizontal investment, like I am dreading farming the Jin Yan's violet grass. I'm just really not looking forward to it at all. And so it it definitely it's definitely something, in my opinion, that there's a limit. There's a limit to how fun horizontally investing in characters can be, especially when you start getting multiple carries of the same type. So now I have Kaching and Sino and Raiden and Razor all as electro type on field units. And I know Razor isn't really used in the same way as all of them, so it's not that great of an example, but it, there's, there's really no reason to have all three of these electro on fielders right and there's really no reason why i don't have zhao yet but when i get zhao there's really no reason to have wander and zhao when would i ever use one over the other when would i ever even use yoimiya or hu tao like they both fulfill such a similar role that it doesn't really feel nice to have them to have that option so it's nice to have lots of options and lots of flexibility for your account it's not so nice when you have to spend a ton of resources leveling two completely very similar characters that overlap and have the same roles. The other really annoying thing is if they share artifacts. Switching artifacts between each character is a pain in the butt. Hopefully one day Genshin adds artifact loadouts. They did hint at something like that coming soon, so I do have hope that they will, but it's to the point where I am really working hard to have an artifact set farmed for each and every character because I don't want to be switching artifacts from character to character all the time. It's a pain in the butt and the amount of different weapons you have to level up if you have too many sword characters. So there's definitely a resource sink and a bit of and a bit of annoyance that comes from investing to characters that are too similar so although I do recommend vertical investing there's oh, it's only to a point so although I do recommend horizontally investing I only recommend it to a point so let's talk about vertical investment the place where a vertical investment hits the closest to home for me is my Raiden I have vertically invested in her artifacts heavily I have an extremely good Raiden is not the best Raiden in the world, but it is very, very good. I have her weapon because I love the aesthetic of it. It really doesn't do that much more than the catch, but I really, really love the aesthetic, so that's why I got it. But the thing that tempts me every time I see M Tash's Raiden on YouTube, every time her banner comes around, I really, really, really want her C2. I love my Raiden. I really, I love seeing her shred the enemies, and I would love her to be able to shred even more because of content i do want to keep her at c0 as well just so i can give you guys the proper perspective for a constellation zero raiden because it's more relatable but most people who love raiden or and if, if you really love raiden you actually want a main raiden most people will save for her c2 because after you've been playing for long enough you have enough characters you just don't need any more i could never wish for another character ever in Genshin Impact and just invest into constellations for my favorite characters and that would probably be the smarter thing to do. Investing into Constellation 2 Raiden would be such a massive increase for my account's power because here's the thing, although flexibility can help you clear hard challenges in the Abyss or help you tailor your account for specific bosses or specific domains, you know what else you can do? You can wish for a Constellation 1 or 2 of a really, really powerful character and they can just brute force their way through the majority of checks in the game. There's very, very, very few checks, mostly just electroimmune checks if both sides of the abyss are electroimmune, whereas C2 Raiden wouldn't be more helpful than having two different five-star units. C2 Raiden is just that strong. And I would say the same thing, a similar thing with uh, uh, about Ayaka with Mist Splitter, the same thing, although Ayaka with Mist Splitter is not as crazy, but Nilu, or sorry, Nahida with C2, Nilu with her with her key signature weapon, Hu Tao with her Staff of Homa and Constellation 1. These are some examples of some relatively inexpensive ways to power up your account and essentially brute force your way through content. It doesn't matter if Hu Tao or Raiden or Ayaka are not the perfect choice for a certain content. If you've invested into their constellations, you can still use them and you can use them to great effect.
And plus, for a lot of people, it's really, really fun to see your characters really go crazy and do an obscene amount more damage than they would have before. It can be very, very satisfying. And if you really love your character, you might not get as tired of using that character. I don't think I'll ever get tired of using Raiden or Nilu. And so for someone like me, if I was giving advice to myself, I would tell me, stop pulling more characters. And st if you're going to still wish in this game, you should wish for constellations for your Raiden. One thing I did want to weigh in on is the topic of constellations versus five-star weapons. A lot of people talk about five-star weapons being more flexible and more valuable because of that, because, you know, if you get your C, if you get your Staff of Homa for your Hu Tao, then you might also be able to use it on your your Zhao or your Raiden or someone else. And although I do mostly agree with this, that in general, if all things are being equal, if the weapon is the same increase as the constellation, then it'd be better to go for the weapon because it is more flexible. But there's a couple things that kind of swing the balance the other way. Constellations is often going to be safer because you get because if you miss it, you're still at least building pity to another character. Whereas if you miss it on the weapon banner and you stack up your epitomized points, then you lose them if you don't if you don't use them. So it can't unless you're 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 fully committed with your 210 wishes, it can be a bit tough to go for a weapon. Also, most people don't have that many characters. If you're like often if you're going for a five star weapon, you don't have like a million characters. Like yes, you can use Haran or you can use Misplitter on a few different characters, but it's not like you can use them on those characters at the same time. You have to pick one or the other anyways. And if you're heavily investing into your Ayaka, it's not like you're going to be using, you know, Kachin, you're going to be stop using Ayaka and start using Kaching and be happy about that you have the Misplitter for both of them. I mean, it's nice, I guess, but it's not quite as valuable as people say. And generally, I would recommend basing your decision as to go for the weapon versus constellations just on the value for that individual character. So for, for Raiden, for example, I would go for her, her constellations before I'd go for her weapon. I know I went for her weapon first, but that's because of aesthetic, right? I would go for for Wanderer. I would go for Constellations first because you're working towards Constellations for Faruzan. Whereas if once you have C6 Faruzan, then you can consider the weapon. But before you have the weapon, I would go for, but before you have C6 Faruzan, I would not go for the weapon. And now I want to talk about a couple downsides of this. The biggest one that I see is fatigue of playing the same characters over and again, especially when the content becomes that much easy. Now, if you love easy content and you don't need to be challenged, then this is not for you. But for me, I really like to be challenged. I, I like to have a challenge in the game. And for me, having Constellation Zero characters, it is more challenging to clear the to clear the abyss. I actually have to play well. I actually have to construct good teams. When I'm not doing that, I feel like I'm kind of paying to win. And it's not as satisfying. It's not as fun. So I'm a really big fan of horizontal investment and limiting yourself to Constellation Zero, maybe just with a signature weapon or maybe even with four star weapons, just because it can be more fun to clear the account. Because obviously there is a point where C2 Raiden might be fun, but if you go for C3 Raiden, and you have a whale and you have Kazo with Freedom Sworn and you have C6 Sara. Is the game going to be as fun when you just delete everything instantly? Maybe, maybe not. It can be more fun to have that bit of challenge that comes from having Constellation Zero characters. The second con that I see is kind of the, the trap that Mihoyo, that Hoyoverse brings you into. They they entice you into spending money because now there's not only new characters, you have to decide whether or not you want to get a new character. It's whether or not you want to spend or spend your wishes or spend your money for your constellations for characters that are rerunning. So that they're, they're essentially double dipping with you. And now once you have your C2 riding with her weapon, well, my Wander doesn't feel that good anymore. Now I have to get him with his C2 and his C6 Faruzan. Well, now my Ayaka doesn't feel good anymore. Now I have to get her Miss Splitter and maybe I get her C2. And then, well, now my now my Ahitham doesn't feel as good. So I want to get Nahida C2 and I want to get Yelan C2. And now my Hu Tao needs her C1, her Staff of Homa. And now all of a sudden you're actually dropping hundreds of dollars on the game. And that's actually not a good idea. There's no reason to do that. So I kind of like the soft limit that 
constellation playing with constellation zero characters gives me and if you're you know if you're if you don't get baited by spending if you're just doing your welkin or you're not spending at all or you're just being free to play or welcome with battle pass if you're not whaling then that's no big deal and even if you're a whaling as long as you have the income for it as long as you're you know not doing th wrong things you know it's, it's it's totally fine you can spend your money how you want but i do think that there's a limit into when into when it's worth it so overall what would i recommend if i was talking to a new player or a mid this is not really a new player but a mid game player i would say get yourself the staple five star characters get yourself watch my video if you have these five stars you never need to wish again i recommend three characters that every account should have and then i recommend a choice of one of three characters that you can choose in addition to that and if you have followed my advice in that video then you can do whatever you want you can go for five star weapons for your favorite characters you can go for constellations for your favorite characters the high value ones i'm just going to go through really quickly and talk about what's high value for each character right now and if you want to vertically invest into each character you can just pause it and talk and and, and take that nugget Otherwise, you can wait for my guide. Okay, here we go. Rapid fire. Baiju, nothing. Nahida C2. Don't vertically invest into Baiju. Dea, her weapon and her C2, but you probably won't be able to do control that because she's a standard banner. Alhaitham, Nahida C2. Maybe his weapon. Wanderer, Farazan C6. Maybe his C2. Maybe his weapon. Nahida, C2. Nilu, Nahida C2. The key. Sino, Nahida C2. Maybe his weapon. Maybe his C2. In that order. Yalan, C2. If not, C1. Ayato, his weapon. Yaimiko, her weapon. Maybe her C2. Shenha, Ayaka's Mist Splitter. Ito, Goro C6. Albedo, his weapon. His weapon for Goro C6, then his weapon, then Albedo. Something like, I don't know if Goro C6 or his weapon are better. Kokomi, nothing. Raiden, C2. Yoimiya, nothing. She's pretty good as is. She doesn't gain that much from her constellations or weapon, but you can get her weapon if you want. Ayaka, Mist Splitter, then Shenha. Kazuha, I would say he's fine at C0. You could get his C2. You could get Freedom Sworn. You could get Xyphos Moonlight, but he's pretty fine at C0. Eula, anything you put into her is good, whether it's a five star, a good five star weapon, any constellations for her, her C2 is decent. Hu Tao, C1, Staff of Homa. Zhao, Far is on C6. Ganyu, you could go for constellations, but I think she's pretty fine at C0. Albedo, nothing. Zhongli, nothing. Tartalia, nothing. Kli, you could go for C2, but generally nothing. Kaching, absolutely nothing. Or sorry, Venti, absolutely nothing. And that's it. That's my recommendation. Make sure to check out that video of the five stars that you need to have, and then you never need to wish again. Be sure to join our Discord. It's in the pinned comment if you want to join it. We've also started a Patreon. Check it out if you like. Please consider subscribing. It really helps me the video out. We've just gone full time. Thanks to you guys. Super appreciate you. If you don't want to do any of that, though, that's totally fine. Just watching the video was more than enough. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.